Good it, fellas. It is Monday afternoon. I'm here with the professor about to take another trip to the Barber Museum. What do you think? And this place, there's not a bad view anywhere. Look at it. I mean, everywhere you look, there's eye candy. See the sculpture over here? Yeah. It's fantastic. It's unbelievable. It's light, but it's just... Supposedly those weigh 3,000 pounds each right. out of cast stainless. Cast stainless, and they welded the pieces together. It's amazing. What art? So it looks like a two-story facility from here, but it's actually five stories. Let's go inside and take a look at the world's finest motorcycle museum, Barber Vintage Motorsports Museum, Birmingham, Alabama. Fantastic place to go check out. Oh, I hear angels singing. Oh. The entry is just amazing. Jet bike. Isn't that nice? Good, good. Just tell them Kaplan America's here. Fantastic place. Shh, shh, shh. There's over How about a jet powered motorcycle? Because too much is never enough. I actually rode for, with our buddy in uh, Daytona, who has one of these. I think this is actually his bike, one of his bikes. It's absolutely fantastic. MTT Y2K Rolls Royce Model 250 Turbo Shaft, 320 horsepower. Just absolutely spectacular. It's 300, 300 plus horsepower, right? It'll do 227 miles per hour, weighs 500 pounds, and it's a kerosene diesel or jet fuel to run off of. It's only 246 cc displacement, but it's rocket powered, so um, carbon fiber wheels. I heard these are around $250,000 new. I could be wrong, but what a fantastic machine. Right behind it, we have a bicycle with a moped motor. <laughs> Two total extremes. The road of evolution, the motorcycle we know today has traveled many roads to reach what we accept today as being a motorcycle. As you tour the Barber Vintage, Sport, Vintage Motorsports Museum, you can see how the concept of two-wheel travel evolved. Here we have a 46 Cuchillo, which is on the Seattle bicycle, which was this right here, which was the foundation for Ducati Motorcycles. Go talk to him. We also presented is a 2004 Marine Turbine Technologies MTT Y2K Turbine Superbike which looks much like any sport, but it was powered by a Rolls-Royce Model 250 turbo shaft. It's fantastic. And here we have four floors, excuse me, five floors of motorcycle extravagance in here. We're gonna meet with Adam Cohn, who is the controller here at the museum. And he's gonna give us a behind the scene, never seen tour. Well, I don't think it's ever been seen of the museum. Right at the entryway here, we've got some world-class British motorcycles. Look at this tri, hey, Billy. Is this the um, the one that they were road racing, the uh, Thruxton? This is, yes. So this right. is this is what you'd want to run, right? Yes. This is, hey, Billy, can we build one of, the, one of these for me? <laughs> this well, if you build one for you, you're going to have to build one for me, too. Yeah, but yours has to be slower. We, we have to give you a handicap since you're a, a former national champion road racer. I might weigh a few pounds less, too. I don't know. Yeah, we have, to, we have to put, like, uh, potatoes in your mufflers or something <laughs> and level the playing field. So, wow, this is, Billy, I really like the style of that body. Isn't that yeah. beautiful? Yeah, that's just like the short track body we were looking This at is what I'd want to want to have, man. I think it looks like so much fun. And yeah. what is this? That's 71 Triumph Trident Production Racer? Yep. Wow. Uh... Hey, this is Gene Romero's bike. Yeah. It's signed by Gene Romero. Uh, Rob North. Unfortunately, he passed away, but we have an escort down to the, to the uh, magical... Well, it's locked out during the week because it's... We're going down to the, the where the magic really happens. But before we go, take a look, guys. 17-story high. Four. That's 68 motorcycles just around the elevator. The elevator alone could be considered a museum. You have everything from exotic Ducatis to production Kawasaki's, Yamaha, Suzuki's. Everything's right here, guys. It's just absolutely spectacular. I've been here before, but every time I come here, it just blows me away. And this is a, uh, basically, you start at the bottom in this little road, this yellow, this, this, follow the yellow brick road. It's not yellow, but it goes up, winds around to five different levels. One, two, three, four, five different levels. And the elevator here is something of a conversation piece in itself. It's absolutely massive. You can put a car in here because they have a lot of cars in the museum too. And on the roof of this, last time I checked, is there still an Indy race car on the roof? Is there an Indy race car, race car on the roof still of this yeah. elevator? That's awesome. It's still there. All carbon fiber is a beauty. It's 
the elevator is spectacular. Well, the elevator. Sheriff's 24,000 pounds, put an F1 car on top, doesn't matter. <laughs> this elevator is capable of 24,000 pounds, which is really remarkable. See, this is your elevator. That's the one I mean. They drop cars in. I just have cars up here. They drop in here. They take a bunch and drop them out. How many motorcycles do you have on display now? 1,000. 1,000 motorcycles. And 800 in storage. In 800 stores. That's, that's 1,800 motorcycles if you weren't paying attention. Cycles. Wow. And cars. Beautiful cars. Lots of newer model motorcycles, too. Like you'll see to your left right here. This is a Triumph Rocket 3. 2,300. So you see, like the one I ran this summer. What, what was formerly the world's largest production motorcycle engine. Over here. You've got a phenomenal collection of vintage Lotus. I heard this is the largest collection of Lotus motor cars in the entire world. Just spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Everywhere you look. Or check this out. This is a Pratt & Whitney R1830 twin wasp engine. 1,200 horsepower, 1,830 cubic inch. It's massive. Two overhead valves per cylinder. Basic engine configuration with a two-barrel Stromberg carburetors. Just fantastic. Look at that thing. Amazing. Check this out. It's a Ford GT. Just a beautiful piece. 2005 Ford GT. Um, 550 horsepower. Talk about Exotica, guys. That is just beautiful. Man, if you haven't been to the Barber Vintage Festival or the museum, you've got to get here. Put it on your bucket list. No one lives forever. And it sure would be a shame to never see this place. It's just absolutely stunning. Hats off to Mr. Barber once again for creating the world's finest motorcycle museum. What an inspiration. Check this out. This is pretty cool. This is, it looks like an Indian 111 in a hard tail frame with a Springer front end. Made to look like a vintage motorcycle. A lot of creativity here, guys. We can get a glimpse, anyways, of on top of the elevator. That's an Indy race car. You can see some of it. It's just amazing. How about a 2012 Shelby 1000 GT? That thing's absolutely beautiful. Now we're here to see the motorcycles, but downstairs we're starting on the bottom floor, which is all cars. This is a Ford V8, 1000 horsepower, 5.4 liter supercharged electronic fuel injection, six speed, mon absolute monster. Sitting next to a Porsche 918 Spider. Now, I would, I would take the American Muscle over this, but boy, that is nice. Here's a 65 Ford GT40 replica, a 67 Ferrari replica, a Lola 170 Spider replica, a Porsche 9046 Thunder Ranch replica. Here's a 58 Porsche 36 Speedster, a 72 Porsche 914, a 71 Porsche 917, just rows and rows, and everywhere you look, motorcycles. 15 on the wall right here. Nice collection of, there's a nice Buell, BMW, a Suzuki GSX-R. Just beautiful. I spy a KLR 650, looking for someone to love it. Tires a little low on air. Probably been sitting there and needs a new home. In the back room downstairs here, here's, here's all the bikes that are not on display, over 800 motorcycles. It's fantastic. And how about everywhere you look, there's something cool. Here's the Don Vesco, 251 mile per hour land speed record for motorcycles on this. Looks like a rocket, basically. Just spectacular to think that was back in 1970, right? Now you can buy a production motorcycle that'll go that fast right off the right off the Kawasaki floor, the H2R. I think it goes close to 250. I'm sure it would if it was uh, set up that way. Here's a 58 Buick Miller, a 78 Thompson Gazelle. Some amazing, amazing machines in here, guys. A machine shop in here with some really high-end CNC machining tools over there where they recreate parts that are what, what I would call unobtainium. In other words, they don't make them anymore, or if they did, uh, they're extremely limited production and difficult to source for doing restoration. So 
quite often a place like this will have its own machine shop to create the tools, parts, to create the parts. And these motors. Engines. Just one of the restoration shops. So take a look at this elevator here. It's just phenomenal. Uh, it really, really is remarkable. On each corner, there are 17 motorcycles, 68 motorcycles in an Indy race car just on the elevator. The elevator, stairway to heaven. If you look closely, this is like a kid's toy or a, uh, a model. If you look closely, you know, you buy those models and you pull everything apart. There you have it. How cool is that? There's one there. There's a Ferrari over here. It's something I didn't notice on my first tour. It's a model. To see the event. Yeah, this thing's oh. you just kind of hit me and let you Look at this. <laughs> wow. That is absolutely amazing. Oh Look at this. God. Somebody's real creative. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Made out of. Uh, Everywhere you look, there's something that will make you Yes. Oh my God. She might have got to come back now, but I've seen it. Norton. Okay. Ducati. Yeah, the double level is quirky and small. Oh, I, I would wish we would do brain laps in it and stuff like that. It's kind of how funny it is, but yeah, it's, it's a favorite of mine, at least. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to get off. That was the basement level, which we've never been able to see before. And then there's the first floor, which we're on now. The second floor, the third floor, the fourth floor, and the fifth floor. Um, you really need to come here and see this if you've watched so far and you like motorcycles. Look at these Bentleys. No, I can't say that I have. How old is this Honda? 54, I think. 1954 Honda Dream? Actually, 53. 53. That was the first year. Wow. Look at this, Vincent. Wow. Motorcycling royalty right here. Designed and built the chassis, which was lighter and handled better than the stock Vincent chassis. Kind of like the Rickman chassis for Kawasaki Z900. Yeah, right. The Egli Vincent is revered around the world. How rare is this piece? Very rare. They're being remade again. There's a gentleman that's got the patterns for the chassis and is making them today. But, what do you uh, think that's worth? A fortune. Almost priceless. What are the production stats on it? Do you know? Low. Beautiful Indians, military bikes. I'm not sure it's possible. 
Look at this. A tree of motorcycles. Beautiful old Norton. If you want to come here and check the place out, definitely plan on minimum of four hours to do a high level. If you want to see everything on each floor, um, I'd plan on a, on a full day to take your time. Bring your sneakers, bring uh, some, some uh, water to drink, and uh, dress comfortably and enjoy the journey. So if you want to read all of the plaques in each motorcycle, like this wizard right here has a plaque, Spend on plan on, on two days. And there's all kinds of literature on the walls. Now, if you remember the track tour we did yesterday, here's a bird's eye view from the first floor of the museum of, is this turn one or is this, they call this museum turn, I think. This is turn two right turn here. Turn two. Part of us, yes. Yeah, the on the track. Out is on the other side of this hill. And then uh, there is a bridge that goes across here to the pit area on the other side, correct? Yes. Yep. Just fantastic. Bill, are you going to race here next year? I would love to, Ken. What are we going to have? Uh, I think we should do the Triumph Thruxton, Thruxton class. Thruxton. Yeah. Yep. Get, get, maybe get you and Junior out here or something. Oh, yeah. So this, this bridge here, we can take a walk out on here, which is something we were unable to do last winter. Now, we did the basement. This is floor one. We're on floor one. And off floor one, there is a bridge going out here that we can't get into. When you walk out here, there is a bridge that goes across and you can stand on there and watch the races. That's the straightaway. And here's a view of the backside of the museum. So if you get a chance, come here. This place is fantastic. Thank you. We just passed up a Victoria Birdmeister, a very rare motorcycle, but I'm kind of rushing. So I want to show you guys all of this on a high level. This is a very high level. That's a Vincent Black Fully Prince. Fair. Yep. Fully fared. When I, when I did the... Uh, so we're going to head up the ramp here to the second floor, okay? That's the basement down there. We were just on the first floor. I believe that's John Lennon's uh, Rolls-Royce. That's John Lennon's Rolls-Royce, by the way, if you're wondering. I'm not sure. Not we won't hold you to it. Here's a flying Merkel, I think, right? That's a Clino. Clino? Yep. Okay. Yeah, and then, that is. What is that right there? Uh, wow. James. Look at this. Now this is, we're up to the second floor, which is actually the entrance. When you come in, it's built into a bank. The building's built into a bank. So the second floor wraps around over here where you'll see all the cars, mostly fabulous, cars. Fabulous racing, fabulous racing cars on the second floor. And then over here, the racing motorcycles, which we already previewed some of these, but I've got to take a closer look and show you this fantastic Ducati right here. Look at that thing. There's an 888. Just beautiful. Check out the Bimota Tessie with the hub center steering. There's How about that, huh? That wow. That's a race version and there's a road version. Over Not here. something you're gonna see every day, is it, Billy? This bike was ridden by Mike Halewood, the uh, Mike the Bike, the world's most famous motorcycle racer. Wow. Mike, the bike, yeah, they had the Mike Halewood replica, right? With the TT on that. Look at that. He had a breakdown on that one, but he won the TT the year before. Beautiful. Exactly the same bike. And this is the uh, Tessie th uh, 3, what's it called, 3D? Yeah. Oh, it's just beautiful. Yeah. The fit and finishes on these bimotos is absolutely ridiculous. So beautiful. So this is floor two. Let's quickly go up because the museum's closing quickly. And if you want a little bit longer tour, I have one of those for you too. How about a, a row of floating Formula One. Formula One cars? Who knows what those are? What's a Formula One car like that? Millions, Millions of dollars? Yeah. Oh. Just fantastic. So we're going up to floor three, and the first bike I see over here is a Honda Rune, and we'll just do a quick overview here. Now this floor goes all the way down the third floor, all the way down the hallway here, all the way down, and it is full of fantastic motorcycles. There's an entire Buell, all the models of Buell. There's an entire Buell display down this hallway, the entire Buell lineup, which I'd love to take you to, but we're down to T minus 10 minutes, so I can only do a high level with you guys. Sorry, we'll be back after Christmas. Uh, Christy and I will come down and do another full tour of the place. Now, here's a Triumph Silver Jubilee. We're trying, Billy and I have, uh, Billy, you got a line on a Silver Jubilee, right? Yeah, we got one lined up. Hopefully, we can uh, grab it on the way home. It's an absolutely mint stock original bike. 
along the lines of what this bike is over here. This one, this one is a Silver Jubilee, but this is a European version. It has a different gas tank, um, which you'll never see here in the U.S. to my it's knowledge. It's even got the British license plate on it, so you're right, 100%. Yeah, I actually like the, the, the United States one that has a, a better curb appeal, if you ask me. Tax disc right there, so that's a sign that that was uh, registered in... Uh, in the UK, 7 BMW, but it's not a BMW. It's an exact Japanese knockoff. I saw you sell one of these uh, at your house, a yeah. white one, when you're when you're going to the Isle of Man. You needed exactly. money. Yeah, and the black one, just like that. So, you know, well, there's collector's bikes, but uh, we're just talking about it. My Gene Romero Triumph that I sold to help fund the building restorations and keep our, our museum. And I saw one here, uh, not the exact same one, but my heart sunk a little bit. And I told him, I said, you know, sometimes in life, we got to let things go. Here's a perfect example right here. This 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 uh, Harley Davidson. This is a 1993 Harley Davidson FLSTN, aka the Cow Glide, for obvious reasons. Uh, my first house I bought so Junior and Kenny would have a forever home before Jordan was born. Uh, I traded my Cow Glide as a deposit. And that was my dream bike, 1993. I was uh, 28 years old. I gave up that Harley to get my first house, which. Um, We'll leave out the ending part of that story. Billy thought that would probably be a good idea, but yeah. <laughs> let's just say it wasn't a happy ending. Yeah, well God somehow turned it into a Romans 28, well, 828 moment. Worked it all for much better. Here's a CX60 Turbo coming up here. No matter what happens in life, you know, if you keep working hard and have dreams and set your goals high, you can accomplish whatever you want to. Mr. Barber's an example. XN85 Turbo. Beautiful. Looks brand new. 800 motorcycles. Just fantastic. Here's an Eddie Lawson replica. One of my favorite motorcycles from the 80s, if not the favorite motorcycle. Street bikes. T minus eight minutes, guys. We're going to quickly breeze through. Look at this. Look at this beautiful Ducati. Alice. Why is this called Alice, Billy? Uh, that's a sponsor, I believe, oh. of the race team. Olins, look at that. Just, I just love these red Ducatis with the gold Olins. VFR 750. Interceptor 500. So we are on the third floor. The fourth floor is an international exhibit, special event level. 1900 to 1930 is a fourth floor. We'll take a look at that real quick. We're T minus seven minutes right now. Yeah. Two Ooh, Billy just, uh, I spy. Direct descendant of the Scott motorcycle. Beautiful. Uh, a uh, silk. 700cc twin cylinder two truck. I bet you it's a rocket ship, huh? Water cooled. Yeah, I mean, I mean is it a. That design in the 20s. Is it a rocket ship or what? It was uh, another gentleman's two stroke. Hope race. Like the GT750? Yes. This is kind of cool. There's a row of, of 252 strokes. Uh, probably the finest era of motorcycling represented right here, starting with a YZ. T minus five minutes, we're on level four. Uh, this is the original first motorcycle ever made, the 1885 buyback Daimler right wagon. Look at that thing. Just beautiful. What a cool piece. We have the Captain America bike, look at this. I have one of these. Yeah, An army museum, same, same exact bike. Yeah. On this side here, there's a bunch of race machines, starting with the Vincents, Nortons, and then on the back wall, there's a Daytona, a Bank of Daytona, banked replica of Turn Two. Former competitors' bikes are on that wall. It's amazing. Yeah. Over on this side, there's more vintage, uh, early 1900s, 1900 to 1930 exhibit is what you'll see here. These are the original. It says 1900 to 1930, but there's an 1885 Daimler right there. Pre-1900. So the real old stuff is on this floor right here. And then we go up to the fifth and final floor here. And here's a good spot to look at the, the, the uh, Indy race car that's on top of the elevator there. And to, to get a good look at the four 17 motorcycles tall. Look at that, guys. It's like something out of a dream. Dream big. There's another view. It, it's, it's black, so it kind of blends in. But there's an actual Indian race car on top of the elevator. Billy said we're out of time and we don't want to get thrown out. And, and I would say I've been thrown out at better places than this, but that would be 
This is probably the only place I've ever been that I couldn't say that. Yeah. I have not been thrown out of a better place than this. <laughs> wow. Wow, everywhere you look. Everywhere. Royal Enfields and Nortons and here's here's a Hesketh. I never never seen one besides here. 1982 Hesketh V1000. Lord, Lord Hesketh from from uh, that's from Great Britain. Yep. Here's another Bimoda. Guys, you got to come here. They're open pretty much year round uh, except for Christmas Day as far as I know. Um, today's a holiday and they're open. And Oh, they even have a brand new Cannondale over there. I spy a Cannondale. Do a one with the uh, snow tracks. Uh, I didn't know they made a two-wheel drive snow bike. Yeah. How do we get out of here? Do we go down, down the elevator? Down the elevator. All good things must come to an end, at least temporarily. It is absolutely uh, a must see, something that you've got to experience. Lots of great things to do in the Birmingham, Alabama greater area. And they have nice weather here pretty much year round. I don't want to leave. Go to the Small Boar Fest if you can in June. Uh, like the Honda Gram is the most popular bike that they have at that event. and. Uh, so all kinds of different competitions. Yep, they have uh, drag, drag racing. racing and hill climbs and road racing and goodbye rocket motorcycle. Till we meet again. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful October day here as we leave the museum and embark on our journey to buy a collection of motorcycles. So stay tuned. Some real great stuff coming your way. Oh, and if you're one of the 80% of the guys watching this or gals and you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button. It helps us grow the channel. It's part of the YouTube algorithm. So hit the subscribe button, like and share the video, comment, and help support us in our quest to bring to you the greatest motorcycle con continent, the, the greatest motorcycle content in the United States of America. So we, we got the trailer here, but unfortunately there's only three bikes in it. We've got a little glitch. It's not full, and that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. We're gonna fill it up and stay tuned and wait until you see what's going inside here. And if you have bikes for sale, give us a call, give me a call. That's my number, 860-916-9784. Text me first what you got. I get a lot of phone calls from people that are trying to sell stuff, that I like insurance and whatever that I don't wanna buy, so that I already have. So give us a call and support the New England Motorcycle Museum. Go to kaplancycles.com, buy your ticket today to win it. 1997 Honda CR500. Money's going to a good cause. 100% of the funds from the raffle are going to the New England Motorcycle Museum. We'll never be, I don't think we'll ever be as big as this place, but uh, we got 150,000 square foot. We only, we've only got 60,000 of, of our square foot of our museum done. There's another 90,000 square foot. We just got a federal grant coming in, which I think I shared with you guys, and we raised $57,000 on the fundraisers. And uh, we've been working our tails off to come up with the rest of the money to replace the roofs and rebuild the building. So as we grow the New England Motorcycle Museum, stay tuned. We're going to share the whole journey with you the whole way. You know I will. Thanks for watching and God bless America.